So today's the day that we're going to uh, put our stove jack in our side wall of our tent. But first we have to uh, decide where on the wall it needs to go. We've got our stove set up in there. So we're gonna set the stove pipes up, see where we need to put the stove jack and cut our hole. And then we got some sewing to do. Natalie's here to help me sew today because I'm, I'm not much of a sewer. And we might need to have someone on the outside and the inside. Needle out, needle in. I don't know. We're going to see how it works out. But first we're going to uh, show you our new wood stove. It's a pretty nice wood stove. Excited about it. Yeah, so am I. I'm excited to get the new stove fired up and uh, get this tent ready for winter because the long winter's coming. It's a beautiful day today, but <laughs> long winter's coming. Gotta have a nice warm tent. Yeah. So here it is. This is the stove that we ended up getting. This is a Summit stove. It's the Ridge model, which is the mid-size stove that uh, Davis Tent offers. It comes with a water jacket that sits on the side. You can take it off. You can put it back on. So you can always have hot water if you need it. It has the warming tray that comes on and off on the side. It's a pretty, pretty good stove. Well made, no sharp edges. It does come with a coal grate that sits in the bottom. We also got the, uh, the stove pipe baffle. So this stove pipe baffle slides up from the inside and it redirects the smoke so it doesn't go directly up the flue pipe. And it's supposed to prolong your burn time. It's supposed to uh, prevent sparks and stuff from getting out of your stove and up through your chimney pipe and landing on your tent. We'll see how it works. So we've already burned this stove off and I did have this in there when I burned it off. And it seemed to do a pretty good job. So all in all this seems to be a very well made stove. All we gotta do is get it hooked up, fire it up, see how she works. So we have to cut our hole through our sidewall. This is going to be fun. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be fun, but uh, it's a one-shot deal. So we've got to cut our hole through our side sidewall and get our stove jack in. We've got the stove in place. We're going to get our stove pipe set up and mark our wall where we want to cut that hole. I think we're going to be right about there. Now one thing I have to worry about <clears throat> is our overhang on the outside. I have to make sure that this pipe isn't going to interfere or that's not going to interfere with our pipe. So we're going to get a rough estimate here where this needs to be. Could you hand me that pencil over there Natalie? We're going to go someplace right there. Okay, give me the um, tape measure. So, from that seam down, we're four inches. Let's go check that out outside. So, if we're four inches down from that seam, which is right there, that puts our stove jack right about there. You can see that our beam our pipes coming out at an angle like that we might have to go a little bit lower so I know our stovepipe is going to be about at a 10 degree angle so on my phone I do I can do that angle deal Ten degrees is roughly about there four inches hold on let's do this four inches to the top is right there 
10 degrees. It's right about there. We might have to drop her down a little bit. I want a little gap here. 10 degrees. We might have to go six inches. Let's go check that out. Yeah, I think that's going to be better right there. That was four. That's six. From that seam. How's that look? Looks good. Okay. So I'm going to mark the center of this hole. That's right where we want it. Yep. We have a sew line around here and we're going to cut our hole just a little bit bigger than that sewn area. Then we fold this all in we put one side outside, one side on the outside, one side on the inside, and then we sew all the way around. So I've got my template. I made a template of the whole size we need, and that's what we're going to cut. We've got our, our wall marked. Here we go. Moment of no return. I'm using a scalpel blade. Makes it nice and easy. Nice clean cut. There we go. Shouldn't be too hard. So it fits good. One of the issues that we're going to have when we're sewing is that these flop around on the inside and the outside. And because I might be doing some blind sewing on the outside, I want this to be in place. So I've got some basting tape. That I'm going to put on here. It's a double-sided tape made specifically for sewing, I guess. We're going to have it on the inside and the outside, and it's going to hold that right where we want it as we sew. All we got to do is sew around the perimeter, and it should be good. So let's put our basting tape on. So my great idea of using, using uh, basting tape won't work because this is a, a silicone of some sort I assume and that stuff has no stick to this it will not stick so we're gonna stick it in there we're gonna tack the four corners let's try that I'm start at this corner Okay, this is going to be trial and error because we've never done this before. So we're going to tack the four corners. Let's just start sewing. Do you want to work the inside? I'm going to stay like right here, right close to this because you can see where that line is, how much lower it is. So if we're like, if our stitches are, you know, like every quarter of an inch apart or something, this far apart, kind of like that, maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah. I think it'll be good.
Got it. So I think that one of the things that we're finding out is that sewing this by hand, although not difficult, it's hard. To, it would be hard to do it one person. So with Natalie here, we're able to work together and sew this fairly quickly. Don't you think? Yeah. yeah easy. So it's just a matter of someone working on the outside, someone working on the inside, and it does go pretty quick. So we're gonna sew all the way around the perimeter. We're almost done with three sides. And then we're gonna sew in the center because that's how this one's done. So we've got our whole perimeter sewn. One of the uh, mistakes that we made, I think, is that we started sewing in one corner and we went all the way around. We ended up distorting our material a little bit in this corner and there was no way to get rid of it. So I think if you can learn maybe from our mistake is that we're, you should have, we should have sewn one side, sewn the other, Sew on the bottom, sew on the top. That would keep the material a little even. As we sewed it around, we started to bunch the material a little bit. So now we're gonna sew this interior and we're gonna do it exactly like that. We're gonna sew this side, this side, then the bottom, then the top. Let's get to it. So we've got it all sewed on. It doesn't look too bad. It wasn't that hard. It took a couple of hours. But what would I do different? Again, I would either sew top, bottom, side, side, you know, instead of starting and going all the way around because we did end up getting a little bunching up in this corner. So we're going to hook our stove pipes up, get them through there, and uh, see how it works. See how everything lines up. So one of the more important things that I found on these sidewall installations is that you have to support your pipe. <clears throat> and I got some stuff laying around. I have an old umbrella stand, really heavy base. I don't know how much this thing weighs, but and then we got some uh, old piping that I had laying around. I try to use stuff that I've got sitting around.
we have to support this pipe somehow. Fair amount of weight there, so we're going to support this. <clears throat> yeah, excuse me. We just got over the Wuhan flu. So this is five inch pipe. I have a piece of six inch pipe going through my stove jack and it extends out about a foot and that protects my rain fly where it drapes over top of my frame. So, these wires I'm putting on here are just temporary to hold this thing steady and then I'm going to put some uh, big hose clamps on there and secure it nice and tight. But for now, this is what I got. So right now what I'm gonna do is I want this six inch pipe centered or the five inch pipe centered on the six. So I'm just gonna drive some sheet metal screws through the six inch pipe, but not through the five inch pipe just to get it centered. So there's a little air pocket through here. And hopefully this is going to give me a little bit of a heat shield to protect my uh, brain fly and the log. It'll do. It's not perfect, but nothing ever is. Everything seems pretty solid. So the last thing I need to do is put on my spark arrestor. I should have put that on before I put it all together, but yeah, I'll just get ladder. I think that's pretty solid. I like it. Pretty simple. All done. So there you have it. Those are all the changes we need to make to our tent for this season. We got a new rain fly. The rain fly has no opening for our uh, stove jack, which totally dries in the ceiling or the roof of the tent. We got our stove jack in. That probably took us two and a half to three hours. Got the stove pipe in, got it all attached and all permanently tied in. That took maybe an hour or so. So yeah, it's all good. We're, we're set. It's going to be a, a good warm winter, at least in the tent. So until next time, we'll see you later. Please hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you.